Hello guys, welcome to Academic Solutions Online Tutorial Program in Partnership with Tibet Colleges. Together, we are making it easy to level up. This is Grade 10 Life Sciences and today's topic is under History of Life on Earth. And we will be looking at the impact of humans on biodiversity and environment. Okay. People have had a huge impact on diversity as well as in the environment in, in various ways. Sometimes they have a negative impact on, on the environment and, 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 and as well as as by as in biodiversity as there are a number of activities that people do that result in a negative impact on the environment. So let's look at this human activities that affect uh, our environment as well as biodiversity. One, uh, people practice agriculture where there is a production of more um, food in the farms that uh, utilizes the land, which in, in turn is affected in many ways as there is a deforestation as well as desertification, which is a negative thing as it harms the land and changes its state from being productive to being unproductive and killing a lot of animals and plant species in the process. Another thing that people do, they have uh, meat production where they slaughter several livestock in order to produce meat, which then uh, lead to degradation of the environment worldwide as this killing of animals affect the food chains and also the economy as animals are being killed For food and everything that we need and then the meat is expensive so biodiversity as well as the environment suffers in the process as we enjoy the meat which in turn is not a good thing for the nature. Another practice that is done by human is mining, where there is a digging of minerals out from the land in mines. So, mining leads to erosion of the soil, which then affects the landscape as well as the ecosystem in, in those areas where they are mining activities that are being practiced you find that uh, mining tends to cause a lot of erosion of the environment it also causes a lot of diseases as uh, there are chemicals that are being produced there that tend to harm the people but not only the people also the environment as they are depositions of those chemicals into the water bodies as well as the nature that is around that place tend to be affected. You'd find that a place that was uh, had high rainfall with time tend to have less rainfall causing droughts and affecting the plant as well as the animals that are the dwellers in that area. So by diversity in a way is affected as there might be animals dying, the people, plant species killed by 
these chemicals that are due to mining. And then we have transport, where uh, the transport vehicles use uh, the, f the fuel, which uh, where the fossil fuel is spent to transport out goods with by different kind of vehicles, maybe trucks, uh, train or plane or just normal cars. So there is the building of new road er in areas and then that cause a uh, house of animals, forces uh, or damaging animal houses and then causing them to migrate in that way resulting to imbalance in the ecosystems as this kills or breaks an ecosystem as animals are required to move or are killed during deforestation in order for new road to be built so that it links different areas for transport to be able to go through and reach the different areas. Thus, these damages our environment as well as it, it also affect negatively in most times on biodiversity. Now let's look at, at, at fossil tourism. So um, there are places where, where fossils are found. So those places tend to mean a lot to the country as well as to the scientists. In that way, those places are then turned into tourism sites in return, creating jobs for the people as they now have a need to hire people to work in the site, to welcome uh, the tourists, to keep the place in good condition and to maintain it in good shape as well. So in South Africa, we have three important fossil sites. That is the Kari National Park in the Western Cape, the Craigley of Humankind in Houting, and the West Coast Fossil Park at Langeburn in, in the Western Cape as well. Now, let's look at, at, at the Karoo National Park in the Western Cape. So, this uh, park is in, in, near the Barefoot West and it has a fossil trail uh, where tourists can see fossils and then they learn about the interesting geology of the area. So uh, the wider Karoo area has fossils of previous dinosaurs, pre-dinosaurs, uh, the ancient dinosaurs, as well as the, the early reptiles and the therapeutic species. So there's a lot more that people get to learn and see when they visit such sites as they they see the remains and evidence from the past that takes them and and, and, and it tells them how evolution has been occurring all this time. And then we have the cradle of humankind in the Houghton, which is a World Heritage Site and has been developed into modern educational and tourism centers. So it has been renovated with time so that it also meets the current standard of education and then uh, inside are uh, their interactive hands-on exhibits such as the adventure boat ride through time. So these are the interesting things that you find in the site that 
attract people to go and, and, and learn more about the history of human kind and all that. So at the Strickfontein Center, which is about uh, 10 kilometers away, the visitors can go on informative guided tours into the caves where famous hum hominid fossils were and still are being discovered. So when you get into the site, there are people who will take you on the tour and tell you more about the things you see around so that it becomes more interesting and more inform informative for you to learn. Because sometimes seeing only is not enough. You have to like learn and ask more questions so that you gain a better understanding so this is a world heritage site as more and more fossils were discovered and they are still discovered even now as you know that science is broad and it is about discovering with the aim of gaining a better understanding of the present and trying to also predict the future. So this is interesting. And then we have the West Coast Fossil Park at the Langburn in the Western Cape. So uh, fossils were discovered in this place around 1950s. So um, the site is one of the richest fossil sites in the world. Not only because there are many different kinds, but because fossils found in this area are well preserved. And the one important discovery that was of uh, the Angriotherium africanium. The first bee fossil ever found in Africa, south of the Sahara. So, fossils of extinct seals and penguins have been found here. So, you know, we get more different species every day being discovered in certain areas, making each place special in its discoveries. Okay, this brings us to the end of today's lesson. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Until next time, thank you.